Saint Faustina. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together. O oh my Jesus, I unite, I unite my desires to the desires that, that you had on the cross. I call upon you and beg your mercy for poor sinners. O oh most sacred heart, Fount of mercy, from which gushed forth rays of inconceivable graces. Be mindful of your own bitter passion, and do not permit the loss of souls, redeemed at such a price. O Jesus, let every soul trust in your passion, and place its hope in your mercy. You will not deny your mercy to anyone. Heaven and earth may change, but your mercy will never be exhausted. Jesus, I desire to bring all sinners to your feet, that they may glorify your mercy throughout endless ages. I now embrace the whole world and ask you for mercy. Today, bring to me the souls who especially venerate and glorify my mercy and immerse them in my mercy. These souls sorrowed most over my passion and entered most deeply into my spirit. They are living images of my compassionate heart. These souls will shine with a special brightness in the next life. Not one of them will go into the fire of hell. I shall particularly defend each one of them at the hour of death. Most, Most merciful Jesus, Jesus whose heart is love itself, receive into the abode of your most compassionate heart the souls of those who particularly extol and venerate the greatness of your mercy. These souls are mighty with the very power of God himself. In the midst of all afflictions and adversities, they go forward, confident of your mercy, and united to you, O Jesus, they carry all mankind on their shoulders. These souls will not be judged severely, but your mercy will embrace them as they depart from this life. Eternal Father, turn your merciful gaze upon the souls who glorify and venerate your greatest attribute, that of your fathomless mercy, and who are enclosed in the most compassionate heart of Jesus. These souls are a living gospel 
their hands are full of deeds of mercy, and their hearts overflowing with joy, sing a canticle of mercy to you. O Most High, I beg you, O God, show them your mercy according to the hope and trust they have placed in you. Let there be accomplished in them the promise of Jesus, who said to them that during their life, but especially at the hour of death, the souls who will venerate this fathomless mercy of his, he himself will defend as his glory. Amen. We shall now play, pray the chaplet of the divine mercy together. You expire, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fountain of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Oh, you did. 
Look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, King of mercy, I trust in you. St. Faustina, pray for us. St. John Paul II, pray for us. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all and with your spirit my dear brothers as we come together this evening to continue to prepare ourselves to celebrate the feast of the parish we today we want to reflect on the culture of mercy that we are called to live to believe in god's mercy for us to enjoy that mercy to live in that mercy and to share that mercy for at times we have failed to appreciate god's love and forgiveness god's goodness let us humble ourselves and ask god's forgiveness and we ask so, say sorry to for at times we have failed to share god's mercy with one another I confess to almighty to God, God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I've done and in what I have failed to do and ask the blessing to my fault to my fault to my most grievous just fault therefore ask the blessed Mary ever virgin all the angels and saints and you my brothers and sisters To, to pray, pray for, for me to, to the Lord, Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God, who have united the many nations in confessing your name, grant that those reborn in the font of baptism may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Everyone came running towards Peter and John in great excitement to the portico of Solomon, as it is called, where the man was still clinging to them. When Peter saw the people, he addressed them. Why are you so surprised at this? Why are you staring at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power or holiness? You are Israelites, and it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and jo Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant Jesus, the same Jesus you handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate, after Pilate had decided to release him. It was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the prince of life. God, however, raised him from the dead and to the fact that we are the witnesses. And it is the same Jesus which through our faith in it has brought back the strength of this man whom you see here and who is well known to you. It is faith in that name that has restored this man to health, as you can all see. Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea what you were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold when he said through all the prophets that Christ would suffer. Now you must repent and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, and so that the Lord may send the time of comfort. Then he will send you the Christ he has predestined, that is Jesus, whom heaven must keep till the universal restoration comes, with God proclaimed, speaking through his holy prophets. Moses, for example, said, the Lord God will raise up a prophet like myself for you from among your own brothers. You must listen to whatever he tells you. The man who does not listen to that prophet is to be cut off from the people. In fact, all the prophets that have ever spoken from Samuel onwards have predicted these days. You are the heirs of the prophets and the heirs of the covenant God made with our ancestors when he told Abraham, in your offspring, all the families of the earth will be blessed. It was for you in the first place that God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from his wicked ways. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. The disciples told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized Jesus at the breaking of bread. They were still talking about all this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, Why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones, as you can see, I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. The joy was so great that they could not believe it. They stood there dumbfounded. So he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their eyes. Then he told them, this is what I meant when I said while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets and in the Psalms has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, so you see how it is written that the Christ would suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. And that in his name repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So my dear sisters and brothers, the Lord Jesus grants you his peace. Today we have this theme, eh? culture of mercy, live it. A culture is something like becomes our, not only just certain functions or rituals, but part of our life. It becomes a character like in our life. So our very life is to be mercy. Okay. We have this um, team, uh, this a story about the monk with the scorpion. The Su monk went to take a bath in the river, and this senior monk who got in first, he noticed the scorpion struggling in the water. So he reached out to rescue that scorpion out of the water. They knew scorpion couldn't swim, so it would get drowned. So because of his compassion and heart, he reached out and caught hold of it and was supposed to place on the bank, but the scorpion stunk him. You know? And in pain, he took out hand and the, again, the scorpion fell into the river. And again he reached out. And this was repeated a few times. His disciple, the young man who saw this, he told, what are you trying to do? Okay. What are you trying to do? You know the scorpion stings. You allow, let it get drowned, you know. Then this is what he said to that young man, you know. My dear brother, the scorpion is not stinking me out of malice or evil intent. You know, just as it is water's nature to make me wet, 
so it is a scorpion's nature to sting he doesn't understand that i'm getting him to safety can't comprehend you know this guy is not going to harm me he's just trying to save me equally but just it is the scorpion nature to sting so it is my nature to save him just as he is not leaving his nature the scorpion is not going to let go of his nature of stinging you know so why should i leave my nature my nature is to save my nature is to help every creature human or animal compassion cannot be stopped easily this was the older monk told the young monk so my question is what is our nature who am i there's something to ask ponder you know who am i what is your nature wherein lies our dignity see if you look in genesis chapter 3 you know chapter 1 verse 26 eh, about creation story this how the thing is that god said let us make man including woman also eh, in our own image in the likeness of ourselves we are created in the image and likeness of god that is our human nature that is our dignity we have to discover ourselves as creatures of god create the image and likeness of him okay and not to identify ourselves with what the wealth we have the titles we have or okay, the back education background we have or status in life we have but to know that we are create the image and likeness of god that's why the human rights we speak of if you read the catechism of calvary church it begins with this that our dignity lies in being the very image and likeness of god and we see that the visible image of god is the person of jesus god who became man the word made flesh in jesus we see the face of god and the year of um my mercy this um we had this team you know be merciful like the father the of mercy yeah? be merciful like the father taken from luke gospel chapter 6 verse 36 some texts will be compassionate as the heavenly father is compassionate be merciful as the heavenly father is merciful we are god to be called to be god like okay to be god like to be merciful to be kind to be gentle if you look in today's reading yesterday's reading today's reading as per the gospel we see jesus is compassionate and his compassion is very patient with the apostles they ran away they abandoned him okay one betrayed him another denied him and the rest of them absconded and they just ran left him alone if they except for john's gospel the other three gospel jesus was nobody of the apostles were around him at the crucifixion in spite of that he is very understanding he is compassionate he is patient with them and he reaches out to them to gather them again they are going on their own ways you know he goes and gather them yesterday we saw the two disciples to emmaus he went and reached out to them enlighten them enable them to understand the scriptures and today we see the continuation how the two came back to jerusalem to share the good news that they have encountered the risen lord and here jesus comes to them peace be with you he says and he goes to great extent to convince them that he has risen and make them understand that all that happened is in accordance to scriptures in fulfillment of god's plan god is patient god is forgiving he is compassionate he is merciful and we who are created in the image and likeness of god are called to be merciful to have mercy as our way of life 
one of my shortcomings is impatience. Some of my brothers who experience even driving, coming here, you know, with this traffic, see people, I grumble, they will know that. Eh? Impatience. One of my cousins says that, you are very impatient, you all tell me. Okay? God is patient. Can I be patient with myself? Can I be merciful to myself? Can I be compassionate to myself? If I can't be compassionate, merciful to self, I can never be merciful to others. Paul will say, Christ died for us while we were still in sin. Christ died for us while we were still in sin. He is on our behalf. That Paul said, if God is for us, who can be against us? God did not spare his only son, but handed him over for us to be an expiation of our sins so that we can be reconciled in and through him. God is compassionate. He is merciful. So where do I place my trust and confidence? In the mercy of God or in my virtue? In my holiness? In my goodness? Okay. At times, we try to put focus on self. We focus on self, not on the mercy of God. Speaking of this, reminded of late Father Anthony de Mello in this prayer of the frock, you know. He has some books, not short, short stories, Song of the Birth, Prayer of the Frock. There are, if I'm not mistaken, there are three volumes, Prayer of the Frock. In one of the volumes, there's this story about Perugini, an Italian artist, Perugini. He was dying, slowly going off, you know. So the wife was very disturbed. He's not asking for a priest to go for confession. Whereas she didn't understand what was going within him. He was there. I, he, for him, he felt, I put my trust in God's mercy, you know. So the, the wife asked him, Are you, aren't you afraid of dying unconfessed? So he told the wife, look at it. I'm, my profession is to be a painter. I'm a good and excellent in my profession. And I believe God's profession is to forgive. And I believe God is excellent, so I need not fear. I put my trust in God's mercy, not in this ritual, this sacrament, but I believe in God's mercy. He preferred to put his trust and mercy in God, you know, not trust and confidence in God's mercy, God's love for him, not in that ritual. But I'm not saying, I don't ask for anointing of signal. I'm not telling you that. Okay. But what are you asking for? What are you, where are you putting your trust? In that or in the person of God whom you have experienced and love? At times, we are very superstitious. We put, you know, our trust and confidence. Thing. But I'm not denying the presence of Christ working in and through the sacrament anointing. Okay? That's why the sacrament of the sick. No longer, no longer extreme unction, you know, to the end. Eh? Anointing at the end, you know, not that word. They say anointing of the sick. We believe God gives us the grace, the strength, even healing, okay, through that sacrament. But where is my trust? In the person of Jesus or in the mere ritual? Okay. And this one is being questioned for the entry to Mello questions us, you know, challenges us. So this is, so where do I put my trust and confidence? Yesterday I said, I showed you this, you know, Gandhi was said, you know, nothing wrong with Christianity, it's only you Christians, you don't live up to your belief. You do not live up to your own teachings, you know. So we believe we are creating the image and likeness of God. Am I behaving so? Am I really manifesting God's mercy and compassion in my dealings with one another? And that's why Gandhi challenges us, okay? Am I living up to what I believe in? Can people see the presence of Christ in us? Okay? That we are all, not only the priests, you know, the bishop called to be the, another Christ, but all of us are called to be Christ to another person. Okay? Can they recognize, experience God, goodness and love and mercy in and through us? And this Pope Francis, you know, Pope Francis has this to say, The God is so merciful towards us, we too, should, you know, it's not very clear from my eyesight, 
okay? But that we should be merciful to one another, especially to those who are downtrodden, those who are suffering the poor. Can we reach out to be compassionate to them, you know? The word compassio, suffering with, pastor is passion, with compassion, to have really, uh, f- to suffer with them, to put ourselves in their shoes, to experience their plight, you know, to be one with them. And that's what moves us. So we are compassion because God is compassionate. God is merciful. Okay, okay now I'd like you to watch this video clip. Eh? A simple fisherman spotted a tourist and his wife stuck in the river sludge. He rushed to help them and first took their expensive camera and shooting gear to the dry part of the area. He could have easily taken everything. As we see, they were completely helpless. They couldn't have done nothing. They couldn't have stopped him whatsoever. But his virtuous soul was aiming higher than that. He returned trying to save them. But it was hardly easy. The man was old, heavy, and deeply sunk in that mud. Many human beings, unfortunately, if we were in that young man's shoes, they would have taken advantage of the situation. But this young man knew that lending a helping hand to a person in need is a fortune, and that he humility is an ornament. Then we see he decided to take away the old lady's belongings so they don't get ruined by the dirt. Again, he could have taken the bag with whatever in it. Here he returns again to resume his rescue mission. And this move, in this particular moment here, is by God. Astonishing. See how beautiful humanity can be. See the marvelousness of selfishness. He ultimately used his own body, used his own body as a slab for them to step on. He was not thinking about who these people were, what is their origin. What brought them to my country? I think it's in him by instinct that whoever saved the soul, it should be regarded as though he had saved all mankind, as the Quran says. And it shows that he felt towards them as if they were his own mother and father, regardless of race, color, and religion. And as much as his body was soiled in that sludge, his soul must have been elevating high in the sky. For that's indeed a noble deed. And now he made it. Thank you, son. Thank you, ma'am. And that was it. Did he bargain? Did he wait for something in return? A commission maybe? Impossible. Not this man. This guy is different. Different to those the world is all about materialistic gain. Now, his humanitarian mission is accomplished. He left with grace and clear satisfied conscience. That man uh, heard later they have found out who he was and the government awarded him for his charity, you know, for his compassionate heart, a poor fisherman. Okay? Surely he's not a Catholic, not a Christian, but one who had the heart of God to reach out 
And what Jesus did, that's what he did. You know, he did his own body, gave himself so that they can rise from that slop, you know, the mud. You know. We were stuck in the mud of sin. Christ came, man. One part of, part of us, part and parcel of our lives, you know, he became. And through his body, he raised us up. And that's what we are all called to do. As we move from this table of birth to the table of the Eucharist, St. Augustine says, it's not we who consume Jesus in the Eucharist. Eh? It is Jesus who consumes us. Not we who eat Jesus, but Jesus eats us up in a sense. He comes into us and transforms us so the more and more we become like him. We have his mind and heart. And today, if you look at this team, we are called to have mercy as our culture, as our way of life. As God is merciful, so that we may become merciful. And Jesus wants to work this miracle through this Eucharist, so that we may die with him. Die to self-centeredness, selfishness, no? material gain, all our pride, so that we may rise with him to have his mind and heart and glorify God. And let's pray today that we will allow God to work this miracle in us. That we allow ourselves to be molded and fashioned in the image and likeness of God to the power of the Eucharist. And the Lord who continues to journey with us in our day-to-day -day life, he is molding us, he is fashioning us through all that happens in our lives and uses all various kind of instruments. Maybe your husband or your wife or your in-laws your children, your uncle, aunties, your parish priests, okay, or any other person whom you encounter, God uses them as an instrument to chisel you, to carve out of you, to bring out of you the image of God, the likeness of God. May the Lord open our eyes to be sensitive to his presence and welcome him. When he comes, we always say, peace be with you. Do not be agitated. Do not be afraid. I am here to work on you. I have not finished with you. I am here to work on you so that you put on Christ. You put on my image. stand, we will now offer up the petition cards and mass intentions and recite the prayer of consecration. Together, Jesus, Jesus the, the divine, divine mercy, mercy I, I consecrate, consecrate my entire, entire life from, from this day on to you without reserve. Into your hands I abandon my past, my present, and my future. From this day forward, make me a true follower of your teaching. Let your divine mercy image protect my home and my family from all the powers of evil in this world today. May all who venerate it never perish. May it be their joy in their life, their hope in death, and then their glory in eternity. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it have become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously be pleased, O Father, to accept the sacrificial gifts we offer joyfully, both for those who have been reborn and in hope of your increased help from heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all time to acclaim you, O Father, but on this day above all, to lot you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. But dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, with every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, Sing together the hand and hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Father, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Sebastian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saints Faustina and Saint John Paul II, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, to praise, to glorify you, to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us of ourselves set in and through us others can experience God's love, God's compassion, God's mercy. We of ourselves as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Father, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another the peace of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. He comes to consume us so that we can be transformed into his own image and likeness. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy that you, that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, my roof but, but only say the word and, and my soul shall, shall be healed.
Sí. Let us pray. Hear, O oh Father, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good evening, everyone. I see some familiar faces and some new faces. A warm welcome to the parish of CDM. It's good to have you as we are drawing closer to the feast of the parish. Culture of mercy, live it. It's always beautiful to listen to someone who's able to explain to us in a very simple way what it is to live mercy in the image and likeness of God we are created and simply to mirror that image and likeness of God in our relationships with people around us, be it our family, friends, society, community, wherever we are how we could just allow people to see that mercy that flows from us. But most importantly, as, as Father said, it is important for us to experience that mercy, 
that experience that mercy of God. And I believe as we are drawing closer to this feast of the divine mercy, the Lord invites us to open our hearts and minds just to trust, to trust in the divine mercy. Jesus, I trust in you to let our hearts open to the great mercy of God. So once again, Father, as we take leave from the parish, on behalf of the parish, we would like to thank you for being with us these past two days, sharing with us in your simplicity and in your kindness what it is to experience this mercy in our lives. So on behalf of the parish, Father, I'd like to invite one of the youth reps to come forward to give you a little token of appreciation from the parish and from the depths of our heart. Thank you, Father. If you don't want the envelope, I can keep the envelope, Father. Tomorrow we begin with a beautiful experience of I give my all to you. And we have with us tomorrow and on Saturday another Capuchin friar, Father David Regan, a biblical scholar as we call him. He will be with us for the next two days to, to break the word of God, to share with us what it is to go deeper into this whole experience of living this mercy of God. There are quite a number of things that I want to share, but I'm holding on because there's some excitement that's going to unfold during the weekend. So I'll keep you in the dark in anticipation of what's going to unfold. If you want to know it, then just be here with us during these days and you will see the unfolding of the great moments of this parish. Before we take leave tonight, uh, at the end of the final hymn, the young seminarians would like to play a song, would like to sing a song, a hymn for us. And it's good to have this young man, young man from the seminary, Capuchin Friary. They're in different stages of their formation. Some are in the early beginning. We have a good number of brothers who are still in the Philippines, finishing their initial formation. I ask you to keep them in mind as you continue this evening to pray for them, that God's grace be with them as they sing for us this evening before they take leave of this parish. So once again, let's keep the fire alive in us as we draw closer to the divine mercy. Jesus, I trust in you to open our hearts and our life. Most importantly is that these cards that you find at the entrance of the church, we've been asking each one of you to write your petitions, your prayers, your intentions, and even whatever that lies in your hearts. I'd just like to make this request if you could drop it in the boxes that are provided at the entrance or at the foyer at the church not to leave them when you come up and put it there because these are the daily ones and not to get them confused so i would really appreciate as you're leaving the parish and you're writing down your prayer intentions to leave them at the boxes that are provided it will help us a lot thank you have a blessed evening and let's keep one another in prayer So I would like to thank the parish priest, you know, my brother Michael Raymond, and all of you, you know, for bearing with me for the two days. Okay? Giving me the opportunity to come and share myself, okay? The spirituality that I have, okay, that I experience. So I pray as I preach to you, I preach to myself too. Okay? So it's two ways, you know, not only for you, but also for me, the word of God. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Okay? <laughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. So bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you and keep you. Amen. May he turn his countenance to you and be gracious to you. Amen. May he show his face to you and grant you peace. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let's go forth glorifying the Lord by our lives. Alleluia, alleluia.
Thanks be Thanks to be God. To God. Alleluia. 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 Love, 
Lord, you made it. 